Hi guys, it's time for the Steam Summer Sale, and it's time to take a look at some great game discounts. In this video, I'm going to be discussing the RPG games I recommend getting while they're on sale. I will save another video for some of the non-JRPG games that I have that I want to recommend. So, let's get started with the JRPGs. Are you looking for games with great gameplay? Gripping and moving storylines and games that will just change the way you see the world Then I highly recommend skipping through my next few recommendations Because I'm starting off with some of the least recommended games But since you can get them cheap, they might be worth checking out. Let's check out some hyperdimensional Neptunia games Yes, the gameplay in all three of these games is average at best but if you're looking for stories that will make you laugh out loud and just a plain skewering of the video game and anime industries, I can't recommend these games highly enough, especially at $6 a pop. If you're going to get one, I would recommend Rebirth 3. No matter how many times Pludia does her whole lesbian dominatrix version of the Hulk shtick, it's still funny as hell. And just seeing the... Uh, Sega Genesis slash Mega Drive and Super Nintendo kind of get skewered and just bringing it back and talking about what the game industry was like in the 90s just makes this game very special, very funny. The other two are pretty good too. They're not perfect. Um, like I said, gameplay is a bit average. Don't expect the battle system to really be innovational or very fun. And the stage design is very repetitive. But like I said, the story's funny as hell. It always brings a smile to my face. So these games are worth checking out for about six bucks. I wouldn't pay much more for them though. Mega Dimensional Neptunia V2. I like this game a lot. It's not perfect. It does have its flaws, but I found a lot of fun, at least with the original version. There's a VR version that improves a lot of things, but I haven't had a chance to play it. But for the most part, the game story centers around the Dreamcast and how that console kind of came and went and failed spectacularly. It's a really great story involving a character that represents that. It also does a good job skewering Capcom, Square Enix, Bandai Namco, and even Konami. And the fact that they made Konami and uh, Yandere is spot on. My complaint with that character though is Konami has so many great game franchises, why did they just stick with Metal Gear? <laughs> But still, it's overall, it was a great experience. I do enjoy this game. It's worth um, $8 picking up. Again, I haven't tried the uh, virtual reality remake of it, and I am kind of eager to give that a try. Neptune's first actual decent RPG by Tamsock goes after MMOs and Sword Art Online. Not only just the games, but basically the series and parodies the hell out of it. The sad part, though, is I found this actually getting closer to what SAO was supposed to be and was trying to be way better than SAO, both the anime and the video games do. And the gameplay is a hell of a lot better than most of the Sword Art Online games I've tried. But I'll get to those games in another video. It's not the best JRPG ever made, but it certainly isn't terrible, and I had a good time with Cyber Dimensional Neptune outside of the freaking loading screen. I'll have to try it now that I have a new built computer to see if it has that problem, but I, on my original computer that I played this on, it took about four or five minutes to get past this freaking load screen, and I don't know why they have it in there because it doesn't take that game that long to load up. So... Uh, yeah, outside of that loading screen, though, this game's definitely worth a pickup at $12. If it gives you problems with the loading screen, you can always apply for a Steam refund. All right, let's talk about a game that's actually worth getting. But that said, it's kind of like Changing of the Seasons. Tales of Symphonia is always going to go on sale for $5 whenever there's a big Steam sale. This is natural and to be expected. But yeah, if you haven't tried this great JRPG and a good example of what the Tales series is, I don't know what to tell you. It's worth $5. 
That said, it's not the best Tales game or deal on this list when it comes to the Tales of series. But if you haven't gone and seen Silverant with Lloyd and crew, you don't know what you're missing. Pick it up. Tales of Vesperia Definitive Edition is going on sale for around 10 bucks. One of my favorite JRPGs of all time. Your hero Yuri here, he's not some young emo teen or an idealistic young boy. That goes to a side character called Flynn. Yuri is a man in his early 20s and an ex-soldier who has seen some stuff. And he's a bit jaded with life because of that. But the way he and the other characters interact off each other, especially when you throw in the uh, bookworm Estelle who's lived a very shut-in life and a young kid called Carol, there's a lot of humor in their relationship. And it's just fun to see these characters interact and all the characters you meet and how they play off each other. And it's very different from your standard JRPG story with very little cliche, at least for the first two thirds. The last third is Japanese cliche JRPG territory, but the first two thirds, you don't know what's going to happen, how the characters are going to interact. It's a very fresh story, and the battle system is very fun. Probably the best battle system the Tales games ever gave. It usually goes for sale for $50, and I would recommend it at that price. But I recommend it at $10 even more. Pick this one up. Perfect remasters are 20% off their original price. That's not exactly a really big sale, but here's a few that I do recommend getting. Final Fantasy 1 is $9.59. Usually it goes for $12. And it's a remix that fixes everything that was wrong with the original while keeping some of the original Final Fantasy charm. By the way, don't ever pick up the original Final Fantasy game for the NES. It's garbage, even by late 80s video game standards. I know you got a ton of YouTubers who are going to sing this game's praises. I'm not one of them. But the remake does a good job of handling the balance that was broken in the original and fixing the game and making it fun. In this game, you pick four classes of four characters and step out to restore the four elements of nature after you do the usual late 80s video game hero thing of saving the local princess. This game is absolutely a blast to play and well worth picking up, just as long as you do a remake. You also have Final Fantasy V, which is oftentimes overlooked with the story that's okay and not having been released originally on the Super Nintendo out here in the West. Final Fantasy V is indeed worth a pickup because while the story is average, its battle system and the way it handles its job are definitely excellent. The ability to customize and grow your characters in a lot of different ways and just the multitude of parties you can build makes this game well worth a pickup. Then you have Final Fantasy VI, which is um, on sale for $14.39. Both it and V usually go for $18.00. While I do wish they kept the original version of 6 on Steam, I will say the Pixel Perfect Remaster of 6 is the best one and the one that is the most cleaned up when it comes to the Pixel Perfect Remaster version. This game is a bit on the easy side with a little bit of grinding in the right areas and the right magicite. It's easy to make your team so freaking OP that the game's villain Kefka doesn't stand a chance. But Kafka is probably one of the most memorable villains, probably a first in the JRPG genre at the time. He's nihilistic, insane, and absolutely ruthless. Kafka is one clown you don't want to piss off. Don't get me wrong, Final Fantasy IV Pixel Perfect Remaster is a good version of Final Fantasy IV. But there are so many different versions of IV available that it's not even the best 2D version of it. And if I was to recommend only one version of Final Fantasy IV, I would go with the 3D version. With the ability to choose an easy mode so you don't have to tear out your hair like you did with the original DS when it comes to the difficulty. At the same time, it's still challenging on the easy mode, way more than it was in the Pixel Perfect. So, with it being better balanced, having much more story elements, more side quests... Yeah, I enjoyed Final Fantasy IV 3D for the most part way better than the Pixel Perfect. That said, 
Pixel Perfect is always going to have the better music, so unless you're an audiophile, go with Final Fantasy IV 3D. It's a bit cheaper. It has more stuff. The only thing you have to get past is that it was obviously made for the DS, and let's just say its 3D graphics kind of look more like they belong on the N64 and then have a smoothing filter applied to them. But if you get past this, this is an excellent JRPG. Final Fantasy IX is only $10.49. If you're PC only, you should pick up 7 while it's on sale. Eight's not worth getting, in my opinion, and take that from someone who played it through twice last year. But if you are looking for a version of eight, get the old school version. But when it comes to nine, I agree with Pro Jared's analysis. Six is everyone's favorite. Seven is the most important. But nine is the best. Great and memorable main character who has a personality that is actual likable. A medieval fantasy setting that a lot of 3D Final Fantasy games just don't do. And then you have a great battle system, and the graphics are pretty good, and the smoothing filter Square Enix chose for them isn't halfway bad. I also recommend, if you have the money, getting Final Fantasy X and XII while they're on sale. They just cost a bit more, but they're worth the money. The one, the only... The greatly overrated, in my opinion, but still really worthy of checking out, Chrono Trigger. It has a lot of really great classic Final Fantasy gameplay elements, but it also has some of the world building and some of the a bit slower structure of the Dragon Quest games. This is really a great kind of combination of what makes Dragon Quest and Final Fantasy games so great when you see both of their creators combine to make a this game and it has a bit of humor to it too so it doesn't take itself too seriously it's really a great game it's worth picking up greatest of all time no but definitely worth picking up hell yes